everybody, Connor here with IncreaseRSS.com and welcome to the second tutorial of this series. Last tutorial, we covered what WordPress was at its core, a website content management system. In this tutorial, we are going to be covering what kind of WordPress hosting options there are, so you can set one up and follow along. The two different WordPress hosting options can be found at WordPress.com and WordPress.org. To start, in your web browser, go to WordPress.com. On the front page, you will see some real, live website examples that use WordPress. Now, by the time you're watching this tutorial, these website examples will have been updated by WordPress.com. But observing any one of these examples will still exemplify my point. So go ahead and click on one. I'll click on the sand one here. Now, there's a few things I want you to notice when you go to this website. The first is that it's a blog. It looks like a blog. It's organized like a blog. It is a blog. Second, if we scroll down to the very bottom of this blog, you'll see it's owned by WordPress.com. We'll get into what this means a little bit later. Let's go back and look at another one. I'll click on this Big Brother one here. Again, it looks like a blog, and if we scroll down to the bottom, it's owned by WordPress.com. What does this mean? Well, we see all of this because WordPress.com is a service that offers a cloud hosting, a server somewhere else that you don't have access to. Pretty much, WordPress.com offers a nest where you can upload content easily at the cost of any real functionality. You don't own your website at WordPress.com, only the idea and the content of your website. This means we cannot go beyond the blog. We don't necessarily want a blog. The purpose of this series is to aim to teach you how to use WordPress to manage your company and increase traffic, not set up a blog. With WordPress.com, you have a limited number of plugins, a limited number of themes, and most importantly, no access to your raw files, so you can't harness the power of how WordPress can integrate into any sort of website, not just a blog website. Because of this, we will just be using the code of WordPress and not the hosting provided at WordPress.com. To get the code, or the program by itself, we will need to visit WordPress.org. So type that in in your address bar, WordPress.org. Here, you will find a pretty basic interface. Simply click on this orange download button here, then scroll down to this blue download WordPress button and click on it. Wait for it to download and a zip file will pop up. And this is WordPress. Let's explore the folder. We'll see a bunch of PHP code files. This, my friends, is the soul of WordPress. All of these bits of codes working together to create one magnificent program that can manage every part of your website. But the real question is, what do we do with all of these code bits? Well, first, we need to install all of this on a server, which we'll do in the next tutorial. But first, there are a few things you need before the next tutorial. So, the first thing that we're actually going to need are all of these files, of course. So we want to save these to a spot where we'll remember them so we can go back and then upload them to our server. We'll simply drag this WordPress folder onto our desktop or anywhere really on our C drive that we'll remember. The next thing we're going to need is a code editor. I would recommend Dreamweaver, but if you don't have Dreamweaver, you can just use Notepad, which works just as effectively. In fact, in this series, we'll be using Notepad so you don't get confused. The third thing you need actually costs money, and that's a web host. In order to run your own server, you need your own server, and that costs a little bit of money, not much. To do this, simply go to some popular web host server company. I would recommend popular names such as GoDaddy.com or Bluehost.com. Bluehost is what I use and is what we'll be using through this series, though the basic concepts will apply to any hosting company. The last thing we need is an FTP client. For this, we're going to be using FileZilla, which is a free program. Simply go to FileZilla-Project.org. 
or type in FileZilla in Google and click on the first link. We'll click on this big Download FileZilla Client button and then install the program that downloads. What an FTP client is, is a program that connects directly with the server we just purchased. This allows us to easily upload, download, and modify our server instantly. Now, make sure you have these four things before the next tutorial where we'll actually install WordPress. Installing WordPress on our own servers is a bit more tedious than signing up for an automatic installation at WordPress.com. But trust me, it's worth it 100%. The ability to customize WordPress brings all of the power to any sort of website and in the end will give you full control over every aspect of your content. So again, make sure you download WordPress and FileZilla and purchase some hosting and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank <laughs> you.